Hey there my friends, Eric Andreas, your guitar sage, and today I'm going to show you how to change the strings on your acoustic guitar. Uh, so I've got a few doodads here, a few things that we need to get out. Uh, one, your strings, a little uh, guitar cleaner, I'll show you that, uh, what we're going to do with that in a minute. Uh, I'll tell you about this in a minute, this is called Big Ben's Nut Sauce, usually used on electrics, but I use it on my acoustic too. I uh, need a string winder, and... Let's see what's in the old grab bag. Oh, we're gonna need this guy here for clipping our strings, and um, either some lemon oil or uh, what's called guitar honey for the neck to condition the neck. So I don't change my strings very often. I'm doing it today. On my acoustic, I, I just don't very often. Okay, so first off, um, clippers. Um, so clipping your strings off. You want to be careful when you're doing this, obviously. You don't want to be touching the guitar. So sounds violent, but it's not. Okay, so here's the deal. I've had students say, is that safe to do? Is that safe for my guitar neck? Is it going to break something? And the answer is... No, it's not going to break anything. It's not going to bend your neck any more than it would when you go to the guitar factory and you see a bunch of guitar necks sitting in a barrel. If you've watched any of my videos before on this subject, you realize that that's true. Um, I always batch things too. When I clip, I take everything out on one end, take everything out on the other. So on this end here, you got a big old mess. Just start unwinding. Um, I like to do that because it makes the whole process go faster and because I don't love changing strings, I like to do it quickly so I can get to playing. Um, so yeah, so it doesn't hurt the neck when you're, when you're taking the strings off, it doesn't hurt it at all because it's wood and it's flexible and it's, it, it goes back so there's no need to worry about it, okay? What I usually do is I take all of these and I do them together like a knot so it's like one piece so I don't have guitar string pieces going everywhere okay then I take my little uh, this is a little thing that I got from Music Nomad I think Planet Waves makes them too but um, I just kind of there goes my nut this nut is actually has fallen off over time uh, it's not a big deal because the strings hold it down. So uh, yeah, I like to do this and just kind of clean things up a little bit. And then also, I'm gonna take um, this, my guitar honey, and I'm just gonna spray the neck a little bit and run this across it and then clean it off really quickly. It's not like if I don't, it's gonna break something, but um, they recommend that you clean it off pretty quickly, so I'll do that. And that conditions the wood, just kind of keeps it, I guess, slightly moist. I don't know. I'm sure guitar players for decades didn't use it. It's probably some marketing ploy. Um, I won't need this anymore because I'm going to show you a trick to where we don't need it to put our strings on, okay? So, again, I like to batch. By the way, these are GHS. These are phosphor bronze. I use boomers. I use... Diadario, just all different kinds. So um, these are individually wrapped. These are 12s. And uh, obviously, you want to do them in order. And what I like to do is I like to batch, like I've said. So I do all, you know, one particular thing with all six strings. And then I'll tune them all up together, etc., etc. I've found that the whole process goes a lot quicker if you do that because you're focusing. Now this is a Takamini and uh, they tend to be a little, uh, the bridges tend to be a little bit troublesome when you're trying to get a string in there. So I've got a few tricks to, to actually getting it to do its thing. This is one of them. Right. 
Now, the bridge on acoustic guitars can vary just like they can on an elect on electrics, but for the most part, um, you're going to be feeding it through the back of a bridge like this. Or you may have, like on like I do on my Gibson SJ200, um, you have, um, yeah, I do have it on my SJ200. Uh, where you have pegs, where you put the ball end, you put you take the peg out with your string winder. Okay, it's got a little notch on it so you can tuck it under and lift it up. And, uh, and then you pull that peg up, okay? And if you want to put your string in there, which you do, then you put your string in there, then you put the peg in. And then you're cool, you know? All right, so this is the second string. Moving, moving along, singing a song. Again, I don't like changing strings, so that's why I cut the camera on, because I'm lonely. I wanted you to join me. Seriously, I, n I hardly ever change my strings. I change strings, um, obviously, uh, anytime I'm in the studio, or anytime I'm gonna do a gig, but, geez, the last two years, I've been focusing on I've been focusing so much on teaching that I have not been, uh, I haven't been gigging. And I haven't been in the studio other than my own stuff. So um, I just haven't been doing it a lot. Okay, so now I've got, so this is what I mean by batching. Now I have all these strings here ready to go. And then I can do everything at once. So I put them over on this side. Um, another thing that I like to do is I like to line up the hole in the post, the tuning peg, to the slot in the nut that the string is going to go. I just line them up straight. So if I'm looking down the nut to the peg, they match up. Okay, so if you look down the guitar like this, you can see that specific slot for whatever specific string going to that specific post. Then this way, when I come along with the string, it's easy enough. It's a straight shot, you know? And what I like to do now, this is, this is tricky here. What you want to do is get it taut like this and pull it back a little bit so where you have a little bit of, of room. And then you're going to twist a little bend in it. The direction of the bend is the direction that the string is going to naturally twirl in when you wind the string up, okay? And the rule here is that you want the string to have a straight shot from the nut to the peg. Okay, so if it's, you know, in this case here, it's going on the inside, as opposed to coming out here on the outside of the peg, it's on the inside. So you want to follow that for all of your strings, okay? So we're gonna go right down the line here. I'm gonna go, gonna go pretty quick on this. And as the strings get thinner, you're gonna have more slack in regards to more winds. You don't want to just have one wind on there unless it's like the, the sixth string. You kind of want to have a few winds on there because what it does is it keeps the guitar from going out of tune. It keeps the strings from slipping. So for the fifth string here, I'm going to have more slack in my string so that I have more winds. You want the winds to go down. So what I mean by that is this is the peg. Put your string in. When it winds, it's going to wind down, and you do not want them to overlap, okay? Those are just, it's not the end of the world if they don't, I mean, it's not the end of the world if it overlaps, it's not the end of the world if it doesn't spiral down, it's not the end of the world if you don't get enough, you know, winds on there, but these are all things that guitar players have learned over time that will help with the tuning of the guitar, it helps it stay in tune 
and uh, the straight shot from the nut to the post is a good idea because you're creating uh, unneed you're you're not creating unneeded tension on the nut which creates the string to bind in the nut which creates tuning problems so and this is a lifesaver you got to get a, a string winder if you don't have one. Okay, the thinner the string, the more winds you're going to have on there. Okay, this is where I flip this over. We're done with that. We're done with that. Okay. So maybe you can see a little bit better here what I'm going to be doing. So I've got my little bend in there. I'm going to hold this kind of taut with my finger like that. I'm going to wind it so that the string is on the inside of the peg instead of this side. And I'm going to wind. When you're doing this, it's real easy for that guitar to get loose on you, to fall down on the ground. So make sure you're securing it. Because if you're jostling it around like this, it wants to fall off the teeny tiny IKEA table that you got. I would highly suggest doing this on a much sturdier table. I live on the edge. Okay. Yeah, this thing is just like hanging on by a thread. Okay, so um, it's not my favorite guitar. It's not my, it's not my worst guitar. Um, I've just had it for a long time. Uh, okay, so here we go, thin string again. Again, we're, we're wanting to have a few wands on there, so you see all the slack that I've got here. This is something that you'll kind of get used to over time, okay? Um, there's not an exact measurement, because Guitars are different. Okay. And then basically what I'm wanting to do here is just hold it tight enough to where I can get one wind on it. So I'm not holding it too tight, just kind of loosely here. And I'm watching it. I'm watching it right down here by the, the tuning peg so that it winds down. Okay. And this is a wrist saver. If you have a drill with this bit on the end, like a lot of guitar techs do, it makes the whole process go even quicker. But I never seem to have batteries in my drill. So I'm not a very handy man. Except when it comes to guitars, maybe. So I, I do all this stuff with the with the, the string winder here like this. Okay, so I got a lot of winds on that one. Nothing's overlapping, it's going down. Everybody's happy. And I'm just tuning these up to, you know, to basic, um, basic feel of what I think they should be. Okay, because I'm gonna tune them later, okay. Okay, again on this one, get some slack in there, twist. Sometimes people will tie knots in the high E string. I don't typically on my acoustics because that string is such a thick string anyhow that if you can put a, a good bend in it and get several winds on there, I don't have them slip. But on electrics, a lot of times that, that, that string is going to be thinner, so it's going to be a problem if you don't either tie a knot in it or get a lot of winds on there, or um, there's, a, there's a few other tricks as well, but those are the main two. And then remember, whenever you're putting new strings on, you're going to have tuning problems the first day, sometimes longer if you don't tune it correctly or if you don't stretch the strings out. So the, the technique that I like to do is I like to stretch the strings out so that 
I don't have to sit there and tune the guitar over and over and over and over again. Okay, I can feel it getting close to the end here, so I don't want to leave my thumb in there. So there, so I got it basically, so bam, strings are on, right? Let's get rid of this. Now what I like to do is I like to put the guitar on my lap, take my index fingers, put it under the string and stretch. Um, because what we're trying to do is we're trying to stretch some of that um, extra slack out of the line. Um, for the last bit here, I like to feel the tuning peg as I'm feeling the string so that I know basically where I'm at. I know the basic tension that that, that string should be on when it's in tune. Um, I'm still going to have to tune the guitar, of course, but this helps a lot. Okay, So the idea here is what you want to do is you want to get your tuner out get it in basic tune or use another guitar, get it in basic tune, to put your index fingers under the string, palms on the string, and stretch. You need to be careful with this because it's not like you're going to put an eye out or you shouldn't, but you're, you stretch that and then the string goes out of tune, you tune it up, string goes out of tune, you tune it up, and usually for the whole set you'll have to do that, if you're doing this correctly, about three or four times to get all the, the stretch out of it, okay? Then once you do that, then you'll bring it up to tune until it stops doing that. Okay, you want it to stop doing that. Now here, I was going to tell you the trick here. What you want to do is, you don't need clippers. What you can do is just take the string, move it in one direction, and then move it totally in the opposite direction. And then totally in the opposite direction again. And you do that a few times, and then what happens is that metal gets tired, okay? the tinsel gets tired and it breaks. So, pretty cool little trick. The first time I saw it, I'm like, oh, that's awesome. So you just go right around, right around the, the bit there, breaks off real nice and clean, right? Isn't that cool? And so you don't have little bits and pieces poking out of the strings, uh, you know, out of the, the headstock, which is a real pain in the butt. So you can go right down the line with this and they all break off real nice. Bam, it's done. So now I just need to stretch the strings out. I won't, I won't bore you with the details, but I'm gonna stretch the strings out, I'm gonna tune. Stretch the strings out, tune. Stretch the strings out and tune. Always tune up to a note, never tune down to it. So if you're, if you're too high, tune underneath the note, come back up to the pitch. That will ensure that you don't have any slack in the line. If you tune down to a note, you can have slack in the line, slack in your string, and that will cause tuning problems. So I'm gonna stretch this a few times, tune it up, tune it up, etc., until it's in tune perfectly, right? Oh, that's beautiful. Hey, I'm Eric Andreas, your guitar sage. If you like this video, hit thumbs up, hit subscribe. I have only a few hundred, uh, 700-ish videos here on YouTube, teaching all sorts of songs, gear review, all sorts of stuff. If you really know, wanna know where the magic happens, hit the link below for the Unstoppable Guitar System. Get in that mammoth teaching course for $1. Yes, spent thousands of hours on that course, and it will teach you from the very beginning on how to play guitar to all sorts of advanced knowledge. And I will address any questions that you have there daily, one-on-one, -on -one, email with me, and along with a monthly live telecast with me. That's right, wherever you live in the world, you and me will talk. So check that out, Unstoppable Guitar System. Get the free ebook at yourguitarsage.com. I have a plethora of things for you. I'm on Twitter and Facebook and all that good stuff, so please let me know how I can help. I'm very passionate about guitar and about teaching guitar and about cats. Uh, Tux is sitting over here watching me right now. So please, be kind to one another. Spay and neuter your animals. Play lots of guitar. Don't trust the man. See ya.